we can launch a product beginning to end in 90 days, which is crazy, right? This is really crazy. But we've been doing this for a while. It takes us longer to get the go ahead from the lawyers on the name of the product than it does to actually launch it now. And how did you come up with that process? What are the elements? What are the milestones for you? We do our research. We've got nutritionists and scientists we work with, ask our customer base what they're looking for, and then um, solve that problem for them. It's, it's that simple. What's your general take on branding? Like, how do you optimize it? What do you look for? On all of this stuff, don't get too clever. It's got to represent you and you've got to believe in it. When I was in Vegas last week, I was talking to an artist and I asked him, what's the most important thing you would tell artists? From a business standpoint, all he said is, once you figure out the thing, your look for your artwork and it starts selling, don't change it, never change it. Because then what's gonna happen, people will collect you for a certain style or for a certain look, for a certain feel. He goes, the biggest mistake I see artists make is that they get bored and then they change the complete look of their, their style. As a serial entrepreneur, I'm always trying to evolve. Having great conversations with other high performers is one of the best ways to grow, not only in business, but also in spirit, health, and relationships. This is Svencast. Listen, grow, repeat. You are Dimitris Pasokos. You are an artist and an entrepreneur. And on top of that, you can write code and you've mastered Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, marketing, social media marketing, etc., etc. You founded several companies. Your main project is Purality, which is about liposomal supplement products, and you're the founder and CEO. Yeah, so I've been doing design, branding, and technology for entertainment companies for 30 years. Um, my clients include Warner Brothers, DC Comics, Disney, uh, Lucasfilm, every major uh, entertainment company, uh, movie company I've probably worked for, plus uh, every major uh, record label I've probably worked for. So I've done a lot of, uh, helped launch a lot of uh, electronic music records. I, I deal with a lot of DJs. I know Sven, you've, you're a big uh, DJ guy, um, like big show guy. I, you know, I've been involved with uh, electronic music scenes since the late 90s. Wow. Uh, yeah, I used to be part owner of two clubs in uh before all this before kids before everything right it was a it was a a whole nother life time ago and i had kids and i settled down and uh i got into uh um i got pulled into uh internet marketing and uh mm -hmm. launched uh all these products for all these big self-help gurus online so i was the guy that was launching uh, major products for everyone um, in this space here in the U.S. for for a very long time. And uh, five or six years ago, I was like, you know what? I think I could do this better. I can do this better than everybody else. I know the technology. I know the design. Mm -hmm. um, and I had some ideas on some products and uh, decided to jump into it. And our first year uh, as a company, we did $7 million in online sales our first year. First year, wow. First year, yeah. So, and that's just been, you know, up and down every year. Um, year six now, um, I've had, uh, I probably have the best team I've ever had now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Next year, we're going to make a lot of money. That's the goal. Uh, and then uh, I've had some employees that have worked with me forever, and they've got some ideas on uh, on uh, product ideas, so I'm going to help them launch um, products. So what we've done in the past five years is built, all, built out all the infrastructure, customer service, affiliate management, uh, technology, everything. So now for us, we can replicate it quickly right? What's the product idea? What's the niche? We can, you know, everything's set up. 
all the autoresponders are set up, the shopping carts are, are all set up. We can design and it, it takes us longer for to get the go ahead from the lawyers on the name of the product than it does to actually launch it now. Um, mm. We can launch a product beginning to end in 90 days. If we come up with the idea, we can launch it in 90 days now, which is crazy, right? This is really crazy. But we've been doing this for a while, right? So we, you know, like we decided Monday, and I've been talking about it. Uh, we set a date. So when we're going to launch this pet food line. And so we set a date for the beginning of the year and uh, shopping carts up and running. We're designing the labels. Um, we know what the product's going to be. Um, we had to set a date off in the future because of the uh, trademark from the lawyers. Mm -hmm. um, can we use this name? Can we not use this name? The trademark in the U.S. has gotten a little convoluted. It's easy, it's easy to file for a trademark, so you got a lot of brands out there that have trademarks, aren't using them, and so it's this minefield that you've got to get through to try to see, you know, can you use a name, can't you use a name, what have you. Okay. And how did you come up with that process or, and, or can you describe that a little bit? Like what's, what are the elements? What are the milestones for you? So we, we do our research. We've got, we've got nutritionists and scientists we work with and, uh, um, we launch, uh, you know, ask our customer base what they're looking for and then, um, you know, solve that problem for them. That it's it's that simple. Um, so let's say you've got a, a newsletter. Um, you've got a membership site, whatever. The easiest way to find out what you're what you should launch is ask them. What are you guys looking for? What do you what do you what other issues? And that and those become you know secondary products that you can do um, for your customer base. Right? You have a newsletter. Um, Uh, let's say it's a financial newsletter, stocks and bonds. Well, people might be interested in how to finance a house or go into real estate, right? So it's, it's similar stuff. And so you ask them, what are you looking for? And uh, then you solve those problems. And so we're, we can do micro niches within our customer base and have it be really successful. Because again, if we launch a, you know, pet vitamin line, and we have five, five different things within that pet vitamin line, and we only sell a couple thousand units of each product, it's still 10,000 units a month. It's still, you know, from a cash flow perspective, it's a lot of money, right? Yeah. And, you know, um, I mean, we're, it's basic. It's we're really straightforward and real, real easy how we're launching and what we're doing with the, with the, you know, with the customer base and how we're um, engaging them. And what do you want? You know, what do you want? What are you looking for? Right? Um, it's a um, Everbella. It's a, a collagen for hair. And then we found out that people are also worried about something else with hair. So then we can combine those two things, C came up with a secondary product and combined them, you know, two complementary products now. Um, because everybody's worried about, these women are worried about their, their hair and losing their hair and wanting thicker hair. So now we're looking at shampoos, um, something we haven't done. And uh, how do we create... Uh, You know, Everbella might become this whole, you know, uh, beauty from within, but, you know, specifically hair, hair and nails. And, you know, then we can expand to, uh, you know, shampoos maybe in the future. Right. Um, it's, it, we're asking, we're asking the customer base, what do you want? What are you looking for? And I think a lot of times people forget to do that. You know, they see something trendy, you know, everybody's doing this. Um, and so we're going to do it. Um, you know, we were one of the first companies to do, uh, turmeric and liquid turmeric. 
five, six years ago, right? How did you come up with that? I mean, how, what was the problem that you identified where you said, okay, liquid, liquid turmeric is the solution? That was mainly um, my mom, right? That was mainly my mom. Um, she was having problems with her arth arthritis. Mm -hmm. And we were just, I was just looking for something different for her than taking, you know, six, eight ibuprofen a day, which does terrible things to your kidneys, right? Yeah. And we had been reading about turmeric. Um, she was trying to take turmeric. We started asking other people around about turmeric. And then I went to Google Trends and looked at Google Trends and, you know, the, the trends for turmeric for the next uh, three to five years. And it was, it was trending up. Um, and that's basically how we, that started. We had somebody that could make it and, you know, absorption with, with turmeric, um, absorption is always a big deal. So everybody uses, uh, uh, you know, in capsules, it's, you know, they'll use bioperine, which is, which works, but it can also cause a bunch of other product problems in the future with your, you know, um, with your liver, because it, it affects absorption, right? Uh, the black pepper, the bioperine, not black pepper, but bioperine, um, you know, your liver then absorbs everything if, if you do too much. And so you read, you know, you read some of these products and some of the labels, you're like, oh my God, you know, the, the amount that they're throwing in there for the absorption for all these things, um, you know, long-term might have adverse effects. So we wanted to get away from that um, because we want, we want people to, you know, have as much, you know, absorb it and be able to take as much, as much of the product as they, you know, as is necessary, right? And uh, so you'll look at other products sometimes and, you know, you're looking at the ingredient list and, you know, they're doing a thousand percent um, daily recommended, you know, allowance or whatever. And the reason they're doing that is because they've got to get, you know, there's only so much your body can absorb. And so they're trying to make up for that and make their, you know, um, product work by crazy absorb, you know, like crazy amounts. And that can lead up to stomach, all that stuff. So we were, we were trying to get away with that. So we, we came across a, a company that was doing liposomal technology that could combine it with a turmeric that could make it taste good. And that's always been our thing is creating something that you want to take every day, right? That tastes good. Um, that's not, you know, without artificial sweeteners, without, um, sugar without any of that, that you can make, that you can taste good. You can take every day because if it tastes good, you'll, you'll, you'll take it every day. And, you know, that's been our motto since the beginning vitamins, you know, highly absorbable vitamins that taste good. Okay. I understand. So you, you identify your niche, you solve a problem, you create a product to, in order to solve a problem. And then, um, how do you approach the rest? Like, what are the rest of the milestones for you? Then, of course, you need like the typical stuff. You need website. You need new website. Branding, you need website. To, the brand. Um, affiliates for us. The easiest way to launch a product online um, is affiliates. Okay. How do you get an affiliate? <sighs> Ask them. You, 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 you go to all these conferences, you go to all the different things and you meet people. And, um, we've, we work with big affiliates. We work with small affiliates. Um, we have, we're fortunate, um, that we can call up, you know, big affiliates and, and get them to mail for us. We've been doing it for a while. If I was just getting started in the space, and that's going to be the question everybody asks is, you know, I'm just getting started. How do I, I would find smaller niche players that are 
about the same size as I am. And I would just ask them, right? Mm. And affiliates for us are marketing. So we can offer, we, we offer, you know, 40, 50% commissions. We've offered 60% with some guys before. For physical products? For physical products. Wow. Wow. Yeah. We, we offer high, high commissions for physical products. And we know what our repeat customer will do. So you've got, you've got to know your numbers, right? So this is a business. You've got to know how much, what's that lifetime value of your customer? They're going to spend X amount of dollars. Um, and we have, we have found that um, from affiliates, our lifetime customer value is higher than if they come from, uh, if they come from a Facebook ad or anything else. How um, so? They spend more money. It's that personal recommendation, right? If a customer comes from a friend, we know uh, a friend or a pre-existing customer, our lifetime value for that customer is even higher than the affiliate. It's that personal recommendation that translates into increased spending. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know, we know our lifetime customer value if they come from a pre-existing customer, what it's going to be, right? How much they're going to spend on average throughout the year. If it comes through a friend, how much they're going to spend. If it comes through an affiliate, how much they're going to spend. So then we adjust our, you know, we, we did those numbers at the beginning and um, we always work with those numbers. So there's a spreadsheet that we, we have that we know what the lifetime customer is on average. Um, Facebook ads um, are, they're okay. They work for us. Google ads seem to be, you know, uh, Google branded ads work for us really well. Um, free plus shipping offers have never converted from a lifetime customer value um, for us at all. Very well, right? Um, in the sense that if somebody's coming in from, we've tried free plus shipping, let's say, um, which a lot of people do. You can build a list pretty quickly, mm. but it doesn't uh, translate into increased sales throughout the rest of the year, right? From a business perspective. They don't spend money. They came for the freebie. They didn't come for the product itself or the, the technology or, you know, they, they came to try something for free. So if so you were to launch a book, let's say you wrote, you, you would, you would write a book, would you launch it like strictly as not free plus shipping? Because that's what a lot of people do when they want to, you know, make their names known and et cetera. Well, are, are, what, what are you trying to accomplish? Right. Uh, the, the question is, what do you, what do you, uh, what's your end goal? Is your end goal to make money or is your end goal to build a potential customer list? So those are two different things, right? Our goal with our physical products are always to make to make money. Um, it's two different things for us. To build a list, if you're if you're just starting out and you want to build a reputation, let's say you want to launch a a physical book or an ebook, physical book, physical, um, yeah. and you want to build a customer list, um, and you want to get to a million opted in emails or a million people on your customer list opted in, I would do free plus shipping, mm -hmm. right? Um, shipping and handling um, and figure, you know, what your shipping and handling is going to be. So at least you break even, then you could build a customer list um, that then you could promote, let's say a membership site right? Yeah. Paid membership site or something like that. So what's going to come after you? you always, if you're going to do free plus shipping, you already have to know what's going to come after that. But what's the next thing you're going to do? If that makes sense. Yes. Because, absolutely. okay, now you're famous. Now you built this list. Mm. Now you've sold hundreds of thousands of units of this book or whatever. Now what? Now what are you going to, what's your next step? Because that's great. You're famous. But are you making any money? Are you making a living at it? 
And if you're not, that's a hobby. And I don't, you know. I mean, usually I would do a an upsell, a one-click upsell or several one-click upsells. So basically the first thing is just to make yourself known and to right. like establish a contact with the customer or with the person so who what's, could be interested. You know, And, and that's the question you're going to answer then what's the upsell going to be the upsell or the side sell are you going to sell somebody else's thing and you know in your upsell flow are you going to sell um something else that you have in your upsell flow there's a, there's a lot of ways you can you know um you can do that i've i've, I've had the opportunity to work on like uh david wolf's uh membership site best day ever mm -hmm. and a bunch of other membership sites for other people so i you know there was always something um always something on the back end that you're going to monetize right yeah what's the thing on that on that back end that you're going to monetize um so you but you already have to have that planned out and already built out you can't just it can't be just haphazard and think about it afterwards so that would be the second thing um, if you already have an audience, I would charge for the book. If people already know who you are, they'll, they'll pay for it. Um, and I know that might be, I know a lot of people are like, no, no, you got to do, you know, all this stuff. If, if you're providing value and if you're providing information that's different from whatever anybody else is doing, people will pay for that information. People will pay for that information every month, right? Um, and people will pay a lot of money for that information. You look at a uh, Marie Forleo, right? B-School. Yeah. And, you know, limited to a certain amount of people every every year and $3,000 to sign up for B-School or something like that. It's, it's expensive, right? Yeah. And then there's upsells throughout the whole year. But her her information, if you're just getting started, if you're a woman, it's it's amazing. Um, it's unbelievable. Um, I've watched her build uh, um, careers for people by just following what she's doing. If you're, you know, for for her niche, right? For her specific niche. So, what are you gonna? What are you trying to accomplish? So, from a a um, you know, mind valley, the same thing. They're constantly adding new and new information, and People find value in it. It's unique information. And they constantly keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, you know, if you're going to go off and copy somebody else's class and come back and say, well, I'm going to do exactly what this guy did, but I'm going to provide it at a cheaper price point. Um, you know, I don't see the value in that. For me personally, I you know you're gonna, the other guy's already established himself. He's he's still going to take your customer away, or your refund rate will be too high if you're copying. But if you're providing real value, um, people will uh, sign up for it and pay for whatever. Right? Our vitamins are expensive. We, pr we provide value, um, unequaled customer service, 180 day money back guarantee. You can send me back the bottle empty and we will refund you your money in 180 days. No questions. And so we provide, you know, during COVID, we had people that couldn't afford it. And we sent them the vitamin anyways. Because for us, the customer experience and the customer value is more important than anything, right? Because it allows us to, you know, launch more products. It allows us to expand you know, our marketplace. Um, and so we worry about the customer. We worry about um, adding value to that customer. And if we can prove to that customer that we're adding value to their life, we'll get bigger. And we just keep getting bigger, right? So it's, it's, it's that value, the value proposition. What are you, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, it, it's, you know, that's been our philosophy since the beginning. Is it hard? Yes. You know, is it hard to do it the way that we're doing it? It is. Um, but we're still around and we're, we'll double next year. Yes, you're, you're very big and, and you have this machinery. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how you can be so efficient 
that you can like from product idea to launch that you can do it in only 90 days. So, so far we are in the right niche. We are making sure we're solving a real problem. We create a product for this niche. We hire affiliates uh, and you describe like, okay, going around talking to them. What else do you do with affiliates and make sure that they help you leverage your sales? We pay our affiliates on time. How's that? <laughs> okay. well, you know, I mean, you know, an affiliate, all they care about is getting paid, getting paid on time. They've got overhead and expenses and all that, um, which is interesting with, you know, with like a digi store because you guys handle everything. And so that takes the, the issue away from the, that affiliate getting paid on time. Um, you can't believe how many times I have mailed for affiliates outside of networks like Digistore that I haven't gotten paid. I'm really, I'm, I could buy a house right now from one, what one affiliate owes me out there. Oh God. Yeah. So it's affiliates need to get paid, right? You got to treat it like a business. You got to treat it. Um, affiliates, you know, care that if you're going to make a promise to them, that you can follow through with that promise. It's, it just can't be, you know, hype it up, right? If you say that your product is going to be this, or your product's going to do this, you better be able to back it up because you only have one chance with some of these affiliates sometimes. And the big ones, you only have one chance. If you screw it up, they'll never mail for you again. You know, mm. or it could be five years later, right? And you know that that's that's the good and the bad with the the internet. Um, the good the good and the bad is the the internet amplifies everything, really yes. good and really bad. So you've got to always try to do the best that you can because you know sometimes one little mistake and it amplifies it you know, really big. So you've got to, you know, we're constantly striving to make it better for, for everybody, for our affiliates, for um, our customers. And now we've grown so big that our customers are our best affiliates, customer recommendations, uh, customer videos, um, customer experience, that's our best marketing and advertising right now. And you're going to say, how do you get them to market for you? Just ask them. You love the product? Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Tell your friends about it. Um, and we can quantitize that. We, can, we, we know, we have a lady, that, uh, Dorothy, that did a video four or five years ago. And I can tell you that off that video, we've made a million dollars over four or five years. In sales, nice. we call it the Dorothy video. The, we, it's the Wizard of Oz video for us, right? It's it's we play that video every year, year after year after year, and you know it still converts because just her sincerity and how how um, the product, how she felt the product changed her life and helped her. Uh, yeah. You know, we, um, we still can monetize it. A right? question here. If if you say, okay, you just ask the affiliates, uh, you can just meet all so many people in person uh, on conferences. Um, how, what do you do with those who, who, whom you cannot meet in person? Do you mail them? Do you call them up? And what's your strategy there? Every company has... Um, an affiliate manager or works with an affiliate manager. Yeah. So we're more worried sometimes about um, meeting the affiliate managers and one affiliate manager can, could potentially, you know, represent three, four, five companies. And so, um, you know, traffic and conversion, um, affiliate summit, um, you know, there's a, there's a couple, there, there's some events that we'll go to specifically because there's going to be certain affiliates or certain people there, not necessarily for the event sometimes, but because certain affiliate managers will be there or um, certain people that 
control large lists will be there. And so we'll go meet with them and make the deal. What do you want? And, you know, some of these guys are asking for a lot right now, right? And uh, for us, it's marketing. Sure. But this is what we want in return, right? So um, it, it's our scenario right now might be a little different than some of the smaller um, up and coming affiliates. Um, and I, and I know that, um, we could, you know, if you want one day, give me a small affiliate that's working through Digistore, we could, we could, you know, sit down and break apart what they're, what they're doing and really go through and say, okay, change this, do this, do this, do this from an affiliate standpoint. This is how you're going to get this type of affiliate. This is how you're going to get that type of affiliate because, uh, we're mainly dealing with big affiliates and I've only mainly dealt with big affiliates because of the previous work, the previous work that I was doing for all these other, um, companies, I got introduced to the big affiliates and I established a relationship with the big affiliates. And, you know, sometimes it took a couple of years to really get, to get them on your side. Um, I've got one gentleman right now that we've been working three years on, but, Oh, yeah. Yeah. But every time he's going to mail, it's going to mail once a month, a million emails will go out once a month. It's a lot. It's yeah. Really you're talking, you're talking volume now, right? And so how do you, how do you, um, work through all of that? We're, we're, we've gotten big. Yeah. What, what do they need? Like these super big affiliates, what do they need? from you in order for them to want to work with you? Like you need, I think you need a certain conversion rate. You need a certain uh, 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 reputation. You need probably does good it, personal it, relations. What other fit, things? Yeah. Does it fit their customer base? So you need to know what your customer base is going to be, you know, your, uh, everybody calls it everything else, right? Everybody, some people call it an avatar, you know, uh, uh We know everything about our customer, age. Uh, we know demographics. We know male, female, how old they are, major credit card, you know, how much money they make. Do they have kids? Do they have pets? Do they have, you know, we can break down our list to according to demographics. So then we can approach, um, let's say, I'll give you an example right now. Let's say we've got um, somebody that's doing an e-course about something, a smoothie e-course. Easiest way you can get them to mail for you is say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'll mail for you if you mail for me. Mm -hmm. I'll take this much of my demographics. We have a separate email list now that's probably a million plus, right? We've been doing it for a while. Um, I built my email list first before I launched the product. Um, we'll mail for you this part of our demographic of this list. If you mail this part of your demographic of your list for our product, a reciprocal, right? Okay. That's the easiest way to do it. Find somebody that you're not going to directly competing with here mm. at this moment, because you never know in the future, though, they might, um, compete with you. We've got people that want to compete with us now with um, collagen. You know, some people that never had physical products all of a sudden. We want a physical product. Okay. Don't you just want to partner up with us? We have the infrastructure. We have the customer service. You know, we know, we know the technology. We know the branding. And you're giving great commissions. You're giving great, great wow. commissions. Why don't we do a product together, right? Hmm. You know, because then there's credit card processing, there's insurance, there's mm. liability insurance, there's lawyers, there's FDA, FTC in the US, right? There's yeah. all of these, if you have a physical product, there's all of these things that you got to worry about and that we worry about every day. And so you'll see people launch a product and know about none of it, and then they get in trouble. And so we tell people, we're like, hey, we've, we've done this long enough now, 
Um, if you really want to get, you know, if you really want to get um, involved in the physical product side, um, partner up with us. Come up with a product together, we'll, and we'll handle everything else. You know, from the from the back end, we've got a couple of people that we're we're dealing with like that right now. Um, some big social influencers that we've tested the waters with in the past, right? But now we're going to take it even bigger. And for us, again, it's volume, right? We can do volume. We can, we'll make it up in complementary products um, across the board or another product line or whatever. Um, so it's a whole business model. How do you make it grow and have multiple product lines and, um, you know, the idea, it's Starbucks, right? Starbucks has a Starbucks at each corner because if you don't get them, if you don't get them in the first corner, you get them at corner two or three um, mm -hmm. because uh, um, eventually they're going to get thirsty. They're going to get tired of walking down the street. They're going to want something to drink. And so they're going to stop off at Starbucks. Um, multiple product lines, we'll get them, find the niche, we'll get them through something or another. And uh, it's it's a business. It's become a big business. It's crazy. We didn't uh, we didn't start off thinking about it as a big business, and we've had to really um, transform and make it a big business, a bigger business, because our numbers just keep going up. More employees, more overhead, more more insurance, more and more and more every day. I, th I think one of the um, mo most difficult things is the sales copy. Uh, um, I, you know, a lot of people who make big numbers on, uh, yeah, on, on e-commerce stuff, they, they have great sales copy. And how do you solve that problem of writing the sales copy? Do, do, you, do you do it yourself? Do you have great writers? How did you find them? Um, if so, what's your take on that? Where, um, so... Our first sales page, we wrote ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes um, the best sales copy is the stuff that you write yourself that comes from the heart, right? Yeah. Our first sales page um, was why we were doing it, what something new we were bringing to the market, how we were going to solve their problem. There's plenty of um, sales copy courses and outlines out there. I would tell people yes. to take a stab at it yourself sometimes at the beginning. Um, we do use copywriters now because we just, do you run a business or do you run, um, or do you write sales copy? Right. Um, there are times that we run um, like one of, you know, we have uh, two affiliate managers in-house right now, mm -hmm. and we're going to probably hire a, a third in-house. And they'll, they'll come back to me and say, hey, Dimitri, I've got this. I've got this idea. You want to try it out? Yeah, let's try it out. Um, and we'll write it ourselves just to try an idea out just for quickness. Right, just to be able to um, knock something out quickly, and after doing it for so many years, right, a, a sales page is a sales page. The the layout and you know headline goes here, sub headline goes here. You know, certain things have to be above the fold. Um, yeah. You know, um, and then what type of sales copy are you writing? Are you writing for uh, direct to? Uh, um, you know, an e-commerce website, or are you writing a long form sales copy, long form yeah. sales page, right? Are you, are you going to write for a VSL? Um, we mainly write uh, long form sales copy. Um, we do do a lot direct to um, an e-commerce website, um, but that's some affiliates. We've, we've lately, we've been having really, really, good um, um, conversions on that. Tell a story for two or three days um, and send them to a, you know, by now, reiterate some of those bullet points, you know, 
here's the offer checkout, right? Um, that's been working out really well for us right now. That works really well with uh, social influencers, believe it or not. If you can get a social influencer to talk about something for two or three days in a row, it converts really well. We've been seeing that it converts really, really well. And and for this, you don't you wouldn't need a long form sales letter. Then you would just need an offer and a short yeah. description because yep. all this trust, because all this trust that the influencer has with his or her audience makes it basically happen, right? It's, it's branding, right. in my opinion. It's kind of like you know, your reputation. If, if I mean, your branding becomes positive if the social influencer talks positively about you. What's your general take on branding? How, how would you approach, how do you approach branding in general? And like, how do you optimize it? What do you look for? What part of branding? I'm a design guy, so that's a, that's a loaded question for me. What, uh, what type of, uh, from a design standpoint or? From, from a standpoint of someone who wants to, or has a product or is creating a product, like what should he, he or she look for? Um, okay, design has to be at least not too, not too bad, like assuming the design is good. The design's good. I mean, it, you know, design's easy now, right? Yeah, designs. You know, you can go on Canva and knock out a decent design pretty quickly. What I, what I tell people is, don't try to get um, on all of this stuff. Don't get too clever, right? Mm -hmm. Don't get. Don't think that you're going to do something unique and better and more clever than the next person, because there's certain things that are designed a certain way, a label or a newsletter, right? That has been, you know. Newsletters are laid out a certain way because it works. And so you'll have people that will become, oh, I'm going to do it better. I'm going to show people something that they've never seen before. And becomes, they become so clever that they, uh, um, the rest of the, you know, their customer base doesn't get it. I, 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 I've done it. I did an iPad application one time for, um, for, Uh, comic books, right? I used to be in the comic book business. And it was so clever. It was so cool that nobody got it. It was so over-designed that nobody got it. And the technology was great. Everything was great, but nobody... I missed my target market, right? Um... Young kids got it, but my target market that was those 30, 40 year old comic book readers didn't get it. They had been used to just flipping from page to page. And for me, you could touch on the panel, everything would move. And I'm, there's a, there's a video up around it somewhere. Um, people were raving about it. I, I got write ups you know, everywhere from the US to Germany about it, about this comic book application. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. I, 5,000, 3,000 people bought it, right? And it wasn't worth my time. There was another company that just built an app where you just flip from page to page. And they sold their company for, over, you know, 70 million, 100 million, something like that. I built that. I, I built their application in an afternoon. Um, so don't get too clever, right? Tell your story, why you're doing it. Um, You know, and again, from your from a branding perspective, don't try to get too clever with it. Don't try to get, you know, um, it, it's it's got to represent you, and you've got to believe in it, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, and, and so, so you have like very consistent messages, like this is something that I would recommend, uh, so that if you have a brand. And if you want to, like, you have all these channels, you have social media, you have like your website, you have your, even your business card or you're on, on some TED talk or wherever you are, uh, you're supposed to basically have the same message and repeat it over and over again and have it like really simple and understandable next to having like a very uh, um, solid CI so that everyone can recognize you once they yeah. see certain stuff of you, right? Keep your colors the same. Um, make sure that uh, the message is always the same. 
you know, being successful in business is doing the same thing over and over and over again. Once you find that thing that works, just doing it over and over and over and over again. It's kind of boring in a sense sometimes. And everybody wants to reinvent the wheel. Oh, now I'm going to go, I'm going to make my brand so much better. I'm going to do mm. this. I, I, it, it's interesting. I was in, when, when I was in Vegas last week, um, I was talking to um, uh, an artist and he was, he's in a couple of galleries in LA. And I asked him, I was like, what's the most important thing you would tell artists from a business standpoint as an artist, right? And he, all, all he said is, once you figure out the thing, your look, right, for your artwork, he goes, and it starts selling, don't change it. Mm -hmm. Never change it. He goes, because then what's going to happen, he goes, people will collect you for a certain style or for a certain look, for a certain feel. He goes, the biggest mistake I see artists make is that they get bored and then they change the complete look of their, their style because yeah. you know, they're constantly exploring, constantly trying to do new things, constantly trying out new techniques or whatever. So now they're like, okay, I'm going to do this new technique, this new, and it could be brilliant. But the people that are buying this artwork are buying him, you know, buying him or her for that certain look and feel, right? Mm -hmm. You see it with uh, music sometimes. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. I, I, I see it very, uh, like, especially in the electronic music thing, uh, uh, niche, uh, it's very repetitive. And, and, and yeah, once someone changes his or her style, um, then usually it's a bad idea. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. Take a, take a band like, um, um, we're going to go old school and really big. U2, right? Mm -hmm. The big, one of the biggest rock bands ever. Um, if you listen to their music from the beginning to even the last album, you know, five years ago or whatever, except for maybe a couple of albums in there, Pop Mart and, uh, Octum Baby, right? Which were brilliant as far as I'm concerned. They were great. They almost went bankrupt because of those two albums. Because it was so different, right? That their core group of people that listened to their music didn't get it. And so that you see that immediately after those two albums, they went back to their to the basics, the next album after that was back to the basics of what their customers, right? The people that were filling those stadiums wanted them to do. And then, you know, they skyrocketed, skyrocketed way back, you know, even bigger than before, right? So once you figure out that niche, we know our niche. And so we're just going to expand on our niche. I don't do capsules. If I decided to do capsules, it'd have to be a whole nother brand. I'd be starting from scratch again. We don't do capsules. We know our niche. We know what our customer base is looking for. Liquid, highly absorbable vitamins that work, that taste good. Mm -hmm. We know our niche. That's what we're known for. So we're, we're just going to expand that niche and try to get more people within that niche. And that's all we do. We figured out what our niche was, and now we just expand it, right? Marie Forleo, what's her niche? Her niche is helping women get their businesses off the ground. So how many women are trying to get their businesses off the ground? A lot. 100 million, 500 million, hmm. right? So her, her potential customer base is limitless. So she's 
figured out what her niche is and is sticking within that niche. She's not trying to do classes for men that are trying to launch, yeah. not teens that are trying to launch the business. You know, she's doing it with somebody that she can relate and, you know, sticking with that niche. And then, you know, introducing more ideas and products within that niche. And not every one of them is going to be, you know, successful off the bat. We, yes. you know, we launched vitamin C just because some customers were asking for vitamin C. And we were, you know, at the beginning, we were like, oh, we'll sell a couple thousand units a month, which was great for us. It's just extra cash flow. The infrastructure's there. Everything's there. It's expanded. We've got a, we sell 20,000 units a month now. Right. Wow. Which is, which is a lot. Congratulations. is amazing. It's a lot. Right. So how do you then, you know, and it's that consistency, that, that grind every day, the same thing every day, every day, every day, you know, just add a little bit more. We didn't get to 20,000 by just, you know, overnight. It took, it took a while, Mm. you know, it took a while to get there, just doing the same thing over and over and over again. And now, now the organic growth, when organic growth happens, the numbers are big. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Um, but stick with your niche. Stick with the thing that you know. Don't go outside of it. Um, you know, I have, I have interests outside of this business. If I were to launch a business for one of my art hobbies. Cause I don't make a, I, I make a living doing art. Mm-hmm. I'll do a project every once in a while. Um, but I don't, it's, it's a hobby cause it's not my main source of income for me. I would launch something that I knew really well. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't go outside of that. Um, I can DJ. Am I a great DJ? No. At a house party at 3 AM. Sometimes it's fun. Um, are there better DJs? Yeah. Do I have friends that are better DJs than me? Definitely. Um, why would I try to go out there and do a DJ course? Right. Mm. Um, if I'm, if I, if I ever did something outside of, and, yeah, you know, and our vitamins, I'm passionate about these vitamins that we do. And it's, a, uh, and that passion comes through, um, you know, in our sales copy and what we try to do every, every day. I mean, I'm, I'm in my fifties. I'm not 30 something, 40 something. I take my vitamins every day. I'm passionate about these things, right? It's, uh, it's, uh, they're important to me. I've seen how they've helped my family, my mom, my dad, my friends, right? So I'm really passionate about these vitamins. I'm not now going to go and do something outside of that scope weightlifting vitamins. Hmm. I don't know enough about, you know, I work out, but I don't know the demands and what a weightlifter would need. I'm trying to do everyday decent vitamins that can solve specific problems for people. Right. Um, So I don't, I don't veer off of my little, my little path and that little path is expanding. And now it's my, my job to expand that path and make it bigger and bigger and bigger every day. Right. So that's from the branding perspective, right? Um, don't worry about the design too much. Right. So let's go back mm. around. Don't try to be, you know, unless you're a designer, don't try to design a better label than XYZ company. If that's what you're trying to achieve, hire a company to do it for you. Mm. Right. If you can afford it. Um, if you can't, do it yourself. We did it ourselves. And are our labels amazing? They're okay. Could somebody design something better? I'm sure they could. But our customers love them. So we're we're not going to change them, right? Um, And if we were to change them, we would have to, it'd have to be over a year or a year and a half or two years from the, you know, from old label to new label. Because you don't want to shock your customers too much. Though You'll lose them. They won't come back. They'll scare them off. Um, you know, there's um, even this name change. We've been working on it for a year. Um, it's uh, 
you don't want to scare them off too much, right? Again, um, what else about the branding? Um, that's it, man. Make, make sure everything looks the same. It's consistent. Mm-hmm. The messaging is, is the same. If you come up with a tagline, just use it. Don't change it every month because you, came, you, you feel you came up with something better. Your first, your first choice is probably your best. Your first choice is always your best. We've come to find out. Right? I see. Yeah, Apple ha- used to have Think Different. Now, I don't know. Do they still have anything? No. I don't know. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. We should Google that. Um, I don't think they have a tagline anymore. I don't think they've got a tagline anymore. Um, because, again, it was a hardware company. And now it's more of a service-based company, right? Yeah. And that's because of iTunes, you know, music, movies, you know, TV, um, that type of stuff. I mean, and you can see how, you know, how their business has transitioned over 30 or 40 years. And you can see how, you know, slow they are to move sometimes and everybody complains, oh my God, you know, they're, they're not changing this quick enough. They're not doing that quick enough. I'm, I just, I'm like, I watch it. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I, they know their customer base um, so well. They know me so well that, you know, they're not going to rock the boat too much to scare me off and go do something else. Right. Have to go looking for another computer company. I don't yeah. want to do that. that. That's what Windows did. Like Microsoft, they changed Windows so much. That scared me off. I will like, I, I felt like as soon as I figured it out, then they change everything, <laughs> and then they force you into the update, and you're like, you're like, oh. That that's that's my frustration with uh, let's say Adobe over the past couple couple of years. Photoshop. Yeah, changed so a I've lot. Got, changed a lot, and I've gotten so used to all my shortcuts, and I wake up one day and it's like, oh no, they're different. What do you mean they're different? Oh, okay, I got to learn them again. And then they change them again. I'm like, oh, now we're going to change them back. Oh, f- for, for God's sakes, please stop messing with it. I, I use Photoshop because for one specific thing, I don't want all the other bells and whistles and the 3D stuff and the this and the that. And I know some of, maybe some of the newer users might, but there's other software out there that does it more efficiently, right? So I'm going to use the other software. I you know, stop messing up with it so much. Um, you know, and, that, and, that, and that's why they've got some other smaller competitors that are doing really well. They've taken pieces of their market share, right? Don't, uh, you know, what's your market share? Who, who's, who's, your, who's your customer? Find out who your customer is first. And if you've already got a small, you know, customer base, ask them what they're interested in. You'd be surprised. I think that's the, don't guess what they want. Ask them. We asked them. Right. Right? Thank you. Yeah, this yeah. is great information. Thank you very much for that. Like as a final question, I would love to ask you like, what was your biggest challenge in business and what have you learned from it? Patience. You know, I mean, um, Persistence, right? Persistence is success, right? Mm. It, I, you know, everybody's like, Dimitri, you know, this thing is just growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, you know, it took me 30 years to get here in a sense. And, you know, constantly, you know, and to be patient enough to make it happen. Even this business right now, five years of, six years of patience, same thing every day with one, you know, one goal, right? Um, To make it grow, take care of those customers, um, to provide the best quality product out there and to be able to come in 
every day and, and, you know, and some days have to do the same thing over and over again. It's that persistence that has paid off, that patience that has paid off. Um, I don't think I had a lot, enough of it when I was younger on some of the stuff. Um, you know, because you're young, you're bouncing from one thing to another, to another. And now I think that's a, honestly, that's the biggest part of my success right now is just that patience, right? That pers persistence every day. Same thing for me. Um, it might be different for other people. I don't know. Um, oh. But I'm, I'm an open book on this stuff. You guys ever have questions or you're, you're, uh, um, your uh, um, anybody on Digistore, any, anything has any questions on what we're doing, how we're doing it. I'm always up for questions. I'll answer any question. Um, the bigger you can make this marketplace, the more potential I have to make more, make money. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because this is just the beginning. I tell people that I'm like, this, what we're doing right now, the way we're doing it has only been the past eight or 10 years like this, in a yeah. sense. Yeah, it's so young. There's so, so much young. opportunity. It, 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 we're just getting started. It's like, re, it's like just like, if you look at the automobile industry, it's just like the, the, uh, um, the, the, like, like we just stopped using horses like four years ago and that's where we are. Oh yeah. And it, it's never been easier to, to launch a product or an idea. I remember when I got started with this, I had to hand code everything from beginning to end. And now there's software that you can push yeah. the pieces together and, you know, lay out something and get it done quickly. Um, if your customer, if, if, if your listeners or um, people are watching this ever have a question on technology, I, I could show you some stuff on technology on how to throw together a sales page using different services. Quickly. We have we yeah, we have created a software that's called Code Channel, like Coach and Channel, like these words merged, where wow. we where we did exactly this. You get a, a, a WYSIWYG editor, you get templates, you can edit them, and you can just and and they they're pre designed. You can make right. them your own, and they're designed from a conversions perspective. They're not just fancy and nothing else. They're like really tailored to our needs yeah. as vendors and affiliates. Don't veer off of them. That's the only thing I can tell your, you know, yeah. the, the, the people that are watching. Don't try to become too unique. Oh, I'm going to do this different. I'm going to move this yeah. from here to there. No, no, it's it's laid out a certain way because it converts a certain way. Yeah. Don't change it. Just get it out there and test it. Test your sales copy and your message. Right. Don't. Don't. Don't mess around with the design or the layout. The layout's a layout. Yeah. The layout on an ad has been proven to work a certain way over 40 or 50 years. What's a long form sales page? It's one of those long ads that you used to see in the magazine that you just had to sit there and read the story over yeah. and over again. It's all long form sales pages. It's, there's a certain layout and a certain way that you, lead you know people into and here's your hook to lead them into the next section right um don't think you're going to be more creative than that it's it's proven don't waste your time yeah. you know worry about other stuff you know worry about getting more customers um you know worry about taking care of your customers um they're your best and biggest advertising are those customers right Worry yeah. about those guys. Um, it's interesting. All of this stuff is, uh, um, you know, um, it's interesting. I love this business. I love, you know, direct response and internet marketing and all that stuff. That I wake up every day excited about doing it. Yeah, Me too. It's fun. Um, I, I I really love it. it. Was really a pleasure talking to you. And uh, yeah, I'm like I can't wait for the next time. I, I can't wait either. As much as we've been traveling, both of us lately, I'm surprised we haven't yeah. run into each other more. <laughs> it's been we crazy. Will. Yeah, we because, of, because of COVID, because there are some tr travel restrictions for Europeans, but yeah. hopefully that will be solved. That's all, that's all opening up here in the US now. So it's, it's, it's getting easier.
great. I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm ready to travel even more, see more places. Life's about experiences, right? So. Yeah, so I'm sure there will be some events in the future very soon. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Cool. Hey, Dimitrios. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for next uh, time. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button and never miss an episode of Svencast again.